Greetings, viewers, and welcome back to what I'm hoping will be another educational video for you. If you've clicked on the video link, you're here to learn about spike traps. Also included here are barbed wire traps. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. This video may not be as glamorous as some of the other ones because these are probably the most basic, quote unquote, traps in the game. I, I don't know if you want to really call them traps, but they can be used to help you in your base building and dealing some damage to the zombies. So from left to right, we have the wooden spikes. Then we have the iron spikes, and then we have barbed wire. So how do you craft these things? How do you get a hold of them? Well, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Again, these can be crafted. They can be crafted starting on day one. They do not require any kind of fancy schematics or any kind of leveling or putting points into anything that allows you to make them. So starting on day one, you can just hit tab, go right into your crafting menu, just type spike or spikes, and you'll see these options come up. So first ones we're going to take a look at here are the wooden spikes, which they do require 20 wood per spike trap. So they are semi-resource intensive if you're just starting out and basically you're kind of at the rudimentary level, your base isn't all that great. And you're uh, just trying to kind of survive the first couple hordes till you get your resources and stockpiles built up so you can kind of build what the horde base that you're wanting and you just kind of want to use these to help you out a little bit. They, are, they may eat into your wood stash a little bit, so you might have to chop a couple extra trees. But they do uh, kind of help out a lot. The trade-off on that is that they do not give you any XP for killing the zombies. So even if you had 4,000 of these things set up and the entire horde was killed by nothing but traps, you would get zero XP for it. So you have to kind of weigh the resource versus what you're going to get out of it and how bad it's going to help you. So moving up from the wooden spike traps, you have two options. You can either direct craft the iron spike traps using four forged iron apiece. So you're gonna have to get your forge and have some iron and clay smelting away to be able to craft these. So again, sort of resource intensive. It's gonna take a little bit out of your uh, stash for making other things. So if you have a bunch of extra forged iron once you upgrade to making everything concrete and steel and you've got your tools and weapons upgraded, maybe start making these instead of the wooden ones since they do a little bit more damage. So also, if you have wooden traps set up and you have forged iron in your inventory, you can actually upgrade these to iron spikes. So as you can see, we've got our wooden ones here. And I right click and it took away four forged iron and upgraded it to an iron spike trap. So then I have this there. So the barbed wire, on the other hand, you can craft. This one requires iron and wood, so it only uses 10 wood but it also uses eight iron. So again, depending on what kind of resources you're working with or how many of each you have, it's kind of up to you which one you want to place. Each of these does have a different amount of hit points. So sometimes when you open up a supply drop, you'll get some of these trap bundles and let's go ahead and open this and see what we get. So in this one, we got two different types of mines and we got five barbed wire fences, five more. We got some iron spikes some more iron spikes and some barbed wire fences. So again, the mines are not included in this. However, those are an option that you would get in those bundles, but you can also get these basically for free by just opening up a supply drop, happening to get one of those bundles. And then you have some more at your disposal, not using your resources that you need for crafting weapons, tools, base upgrades, whatever uh, you're needing. So we know how to get our hands on these now, but what do we do with them? We can just throw them on the ground, let the zombies run through them, and then that, that's it, basically. So, But how do we do that kind of the most efficiently or most effectively when it comes to building your horde base? So again, you're not just burning up your resources, throwing these things down, and they become useless. So basically, they have a couple of different uses. I kind of call it area denial. So basically, it's not going to keep the zombies from going somewhere. They do not see it as an obstruction to their path. However, if let's say this is our base here, this is our fighting position. We've got our railings up over our head and we're fighting behind this hatch. Obviously, we want the zombies to come to us here. It doesn't do any good if they're on the other side of that wall beating on it, trying to get through to us because they're too lazy to walk around. So if we wanted to prevent them from doing that, what you can do is you can pile these spikes up back here. And basically, again, it will not keep the zombies from seeing that as, hey, I'm not going to walk around. I'm just going to punch through here. But once they go in there, it's kind of like, hey, you did this to yourself and uh, you're not going to get through that way. So 
It'll kill the zombies for you. Again, you will not get any XP for it, but it will keep them from bashing through. And then you have to panic and worry about making some repairs behind you. So again, this is just kind of a rudimentary basic idea. I would not, I, I would not advise making this your horde base. It was just, again, for an example. So we kind of want to keep them away from here. Just kind of put various different types of traps here. We want them to fight. So now, granted, they are going to pile up here at the hatch. They'll start kind of moving over and bumping into these, which is going to damage them. And if you can kind of kill them before the traps do, you'll get the XP. If the trap actually is what kills them, you will not get anything for it. But you will survive to fight another day. Another thing that a lot of people do is they'll put them on top of some... I recommend using railings instead of bars because you can reach through to repair them. Because again, these traps are repairable and they're also upgradable. So you do have to kind of be careful if this trap isn't fully broken yet to the next stage of brokenness and you right click with your nail gun or hammer, you will upgrade it to the next uh, tier spike if you have any forged iron in your inventory. So just be cognizant of that. However, putting these up here is a good defense against birds. If you don't have any sort of turret defenses up top or maybe you don't have a whole lot of ammo. You're still, again, in the early stages, but you got birds showing up. You don't want to waste ammo. Maybe you're a bad shot and you don't like shooting at those things while they're kind of swooping around overhead, wasting ammo. You can throw some spikes down and basically they'll just fly right into them trying to get to you. So that'll kind of take them out. And then again, if they get damaged by that means, you can just reach through, boom, and you can repair and or upgrade them right through the uh, railings. So that's just one kind of use case scenario for those. Another one... You can use it just to be obnoxious and just to slow the zombies down. So we have these sitting here. This would be the path that the zombies would have to take. One of these up here to get to our fighting position before crossing this narrow beam. So that'll just kind of annoy them, slow them down a little bit. You can stand there and shoot at them while they're crossing through and getting stuck in it. Also, something else to keep in mind is let's say this is your design. You've got them coming across this thing and... Obviously, they're going to fall. Whether you hit them off, they knock each other off because they pile up too much, or they just are a little wonky on their feet and they fall. So we've got a little pit built down here. We give them access to get out, so they either have a ramp or a ladder option. To let them take their pick. But we put some spikes down here, again, for a little bit of extra damage. So it doesn't matter how far zombies fall. It only does a percentage damage of their health, so chances are they're not going to die just from the fall. Unless they've fallen a whole bunch and you've shot or punched or smacked or stabbed them a whole lot. They're going to hit the ground, they're going to recover, and they're going to get back up. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll go into rage mode, which means they're just going to kind of go berserk and just start punching anything around them. You may see zombies doing some kind of erratic movements and behavior. Again, that's what they're doing. They're just angry, so they're punching whatever's closest and then moving on with life. So one of the ways you can fix that is if they take damage from another source, they will kind of get kicked out of rage mode and go back to their pathing to try and get to you. So if they fall down in this pit, hit the spikes, get damaged, they kind of gather themselves and run through it. And again, if they fell down in the middle here, they're going to have to move through all these. Now, keep in mind, these spikes do take damage as the zombies run into them. So again, if they are not able to be repaired, they will over time just break. So probably after a decent late horde, this whole pit would be completely empty and all the spikes would be gone. However, it would again help you eliminate some of the zombie threat and keep you uh, alive. So, all right, so we are going to kind of take turns here right now. I just have a single barbed wire trap here that we know the single zombie is going to have to run through. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at how much damage each of the traps do to the zombies as they path through it. And then we'll look at how many hit points are left on the traps themselves. So, let us do this and we'll do that. So she's mad. She's going to come running up. Let's turn this on so that we can actually see her health. So 129 out of 131. Not a whole lot of damage done there. So let's go ahead and get this reset for the next one. All right. So we've got our iron spike trap set up here. She's not doing so well there. Now look at that. The entire trap took her out. It is still alive. All right, so we've got our wooden trap here now. Why does she keep changing hit points? All 
right, so she's at 34 out of 133. So as expected, the iron spikes obviously do more damage, but they are also a little bit more resource intensive. Again, requiring a forge, some iron, some clay. You got to smelt them and then get the resulting forged iron and use that to craft spikes. The wooden spikes do a little bit less damage than the iron spikes. But again, the resources to gather are a little bit more rudimentary. And the barbed wire itself doesn't do a whole lot of damage. And Basically, is just designed to slow the zombies down. However, they can take a little bit more damage than the spike traps themselves as the zombies are moving through them. So it is, again, up to you which one you feel kind of suits your needs the most. Obviously, if you're just trying to kill the horde and you really don't care about XP and you've got a whole bunch of forged iron, throw down a bunch of forged spikes. If you have a hallway or some kind of area you're trying to control the flow of the zombies and you want to slow them down, Line it up with barbed wire and then mow them down with your AK or M60 or whatever ranged weapon that you're choosing to use. And again, the wooden spikes, if all you have is wood at your disposal and you just need some quick and easy damage for kind of a cheap resource that later game is fairly easy to get and stockpile, then by all means, there you go. And you can make your own decision on which one of these is the best choice for your use in your horde base setups. Again, very basic. These are not powered traps. There's no specific strategy to using them. If you just have a ridiculous amount of wood or forged iron or wood and iron, and you want to just throw these things everywhere to be obnoxious, if you have, let's say this is your base, but you have a long hallway that's leading up to the entrance, maybe it's even zigzagging, you can just line the entire thing with spike traps. It, again, it will not throw off their pathing. If they see them, they don't think it's any sort of obstacle. but if let's say you filled up this entire checkerboard here with spikes, once the zombies in the beginning make a path through those spikes to get to you and leave an opening, the other zombies that follow behind will kind of try and follow that same path and save themselves from just throwing themselves headlong into the spikes and dying. So again, you can go overboard and waste a whole bunch of materials, but in the end it may not be worth it. So you kind of want to be a little bit strategic about where you place them. Again, using them for area denial, using them just to be obnoxious where you know the zombies are going to path, or using maybe some sort of pit in your base design where you know the zombies are designed to fall, or maybe you have a powered vault hatch here that you have triggering somehow and it just dumps them down in there. They take some damage, come back up, start the process all over. So again, very easy, very simple. Hopefully you guys found this video educational or useful somehow in your bases. If you have any questions about these traps or how to use them, please feel free to let me know down below. And thank you for your time. We'll catch you in the next video.